Well, thank you so yeah. much for doing this. This is something new that I'm trying to do. Um, I used to have a podcast like back in the day in like 2020, 2021. And um, I did like women in power. I did air quotes, but it, I did women <laughs> empowerment. Um, and just like, you know, just my life and just, you know, me being a mom and business and yes. whatever. Um, and so I did like seven episodes and then I just like never just, it's been a year. So I was like, you know, I want to like rebrand and do something else and like try to launch again and do it with different career backgrounds. Yes. And I've just like noticed that there's just so many different types. And I feel like right now is a time where people gatekeep. <laughs> so I don't want to gatekeep. So I want to just promote just, hey, this person's doing it. So can yeah. you. this is what they went through. This is their story you know, like, look, everybody has a story. Like, you know, I just want to highlight different. So for you, I was just like, you know, you do so many different things. And I um, just fell in love with your profile and just the aesthetics. <laughs> and just, I, pers you know, I know how long it takes to content create. And I'm just like, I don't know how he does all these snippets. I'm like, no, nope, <laughs> not doing it. You know, yes. just, but you know, I see it works out for you because your do summer Fridays. I see <laughs> yes. you are the what is it the air apostle or something? American or, Eagle. So like close. American <laughs> Eagle. Okay, American. There you go. <laughs> One of the A's. One of the A's. <laughs> um, you know, I, th I think that's just so cool. You know, so I want to just like dive into that and you know just kind of see and hear who you are. You know, um, but before we dive into that, I want to ask. I've seen this before and um. I know everybody's like 2023 20, starting something new. So I don't know if you ever thought about this yet, but do you have a word for 2023? I think my word for this year is intention. Like, what is my intention? What do I want to get out of my year? What do I get? What What do I want to get out of my week, my day, my hour? Like, I want to I make sure everything has intention and not just like, yes. not just like doing it because you're doing it, but yes. I want to do it with intention. I want it to have purpose yes. and I want it to have like meaning. It's also nice to meet you. I'm like, I'm so excited. I love all the things you create and everything that you show on social. So I was like, yes, double tap, double tap. It's so creative. I love, like, I never knew you were a mom. So when I found out about that, oh, I was like, oh my gosh, she's a mom. She's killing her small <laughs> business. And she's also doing a podcast. Like, this is so good. I always love to see, like, small business owners, like, all the different things that they're creating, especially because I got introduced to it last year to, like, the small business world. i um, sure you know um, Karen and I Yarive. I work, with, yes, yes, yes. I work with them closely, and I love to see all the hard work that goes into it because I think, you know, us as Latinos and Hispanics, we're just trying to create – like take up space in this saturated platforms that's yeah. overpowered by other, you know, races. And, you know, we're trying to yeah. really showcase our backgrounds, us as Latinos being those creators. And I think it's just so inspiring. It's nice to offer a little bit of positivity and a little bit of hope yes. for people out there. And, you know, if it's one person that we're able to change their life, that's yeah. fine. I'm and life, life is hard. <laughs> life is hard. And I think, it just kind of like motivating others is what really inspires me. And I think the reason why I created my platform, because I kind of started when I graduated high school, but I didn't take it seriously to like when the pandemic okay. happened. But I think the, yes, yes, I think that's when I really okay. took it seriously. But I think the reason why I created my platform was because I felt like there was something missing with like content creators back then to what I see now. Like there was nobody okay. sharing their struggles there was nobody sharing, like, mm. how did you get to that point? There was nobody sharing, yeah. like, how you can become successful with just being, like, a Latino, right? And I think there, mm -hmm. yeah, being yeah. you, being a Latino, coming from a Hispanic home, and it was hard. I think our parents did a really good job at teaching us how to be independent. And if you want something, like, go for it, right? Like, there's no... The limit does not exist in Katie, yeah. <laughs> in Katie, <laughs> in Katie's work. I also love me girls. Yeah. So the limit does not exist. Yeah. It does not exist. Yeah. But I really created because I wanted to not just be successful, but I wanted to take others in my journey, right? I wanted to share what were the struggles. I love to share my yeah. lows just as much as I love to share my high. So I really wanted to create a platform where I kind of showed you how you can become successful with, you know, running through those obstacles because there's a lot of different 
milestones that you can hit, oh, but it's going to take yeah. a lot to get there, right? I'm pretty sure from running yeah. a small business, you learn so many different things that you can share with others. And even just wanting to create my own business, I go to my peers. I'm like, okay, what are some things that you you face? Yeah. What are mm-hmm. some things that you can do? What can I do to be better? But I think there was it was just that part missing. So I really created to just really succeed with others rather than just them seeing me succeed, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I love that. And two, you have to also surround yourself. You have yes. to find your like-minded individuals. If you do not yes, have... Amen the like-mindedness around you you're just you're yes. not gonna grow this I, it's, it's it's not i agree you have to find your group of yes. people because if you shout something like you said like hey i have a business thing i want to run it by you if you yes. ask auntie yes. whatever they're gonna be like they're gonna shut you down because they've never had a business you have to yes. ask your business yes. friend for i advice. agree <laughs> and i think i learned that the hard way because i used to get gaslighted a lot and I used to surround myself with those individuals that didn't support me that didn't want to see me succeed and so I think like I like I said last year was the year of growth that I really saw okay this is what a friendship support system should look like this is what it shouldn't look like like you need to surround yourself with others who are truly proud for you right I think there's a quote that says be friends who will mention your name in a in a room Mm-hmm. for like opportunity like that's who you want to be yes, friends with yep. and I think I've always remembered yep. that like if I I want to if my friend group like if they are proud of what I'm doing and I'm proud of what they're doing like that's what it should look like it shouldn't be like envious or it shouldn't be like oh that how did you do that like how did you like there shouldn't yeah. question like your success yeah. like they should be you're, proud um what is it I said it's like um your check yes. mark like it's like you they, your validation they have to make sure you're credible it's like no i am i am like, worth I it am i am credible yes. i am that sort so yes. i really learned that yes. through my past friendships i learned what a true friend should be and how a friend should support you rather than not and i think it's hard i think so something that nobody talks about is those friendships like i think a friendship breakup oh is much worse oh than a relationship what? breakup oh my gosh. <laughs> I've been seeing that around. And you know what's funny is um, not that I haven't had like some crazy friendship breakups, but I feel when you're a kid or whatever, but like I feel like um, as an adult, when you're going through your growth journey and you're realizing the people that are supposed to be in your corner and like where you put them, um, friends turning into like or best friends turning into acquaintances because of just the way things are. I did, I would say, dealt with a big friendship breakup that, like, I didn't realize was a friendship breakup until maybe I started seeing all these memes of, like, you grief these things worse. I was like, man, you know, I guess, yeah, you're right, because you lost your person in that sense. Yeah, you lost that person that you thought was your friend that you shared everything with, and they knew, like, all the little bits and pieces that nobody else knows, and now you kind of have to remember that, you know, it's, it's really hard to lose that person who was in your life for a long time. But I always like to remind myself and circle back that people are always in your life for a blessing or a lesson. And sometimes it's hard mm. to to go through that lesson. But I think that also teaches you things that you can take on in the future, right? You had to go through that friendship breakup. Yeah. You had to go through that lesson because it taught you something. And whatever it taught you, you know what to do like in those next steps like where you want that next step you want to go to tell me how you got into like the whole diy like balancing your nine to five because you have a nine to five so what's your nine to five (laughs) so my (laughs) nine to five currently i work for american eagle and i am a my my official long title is my my airy market leader so I work kind of like in the corporate world. I am in charge Ooh. of, we, do, we recently went through realignment. So I am in charge of our 13 stores here in Central Texas. So I'm in charge of That's like San Antonio, cool. Austin, Round Rock, now College Station, Waco stores wow. and Colleen stores. So I'm in charge of those and I oversee them. And we really just focus on customer experience, customer enhancement, we really hone in on one-on-one styling appointments. We do localization, which is like eventing and stuff like that. So we really oh, just wow. take it, the customer to the next level and ex- and just enhance their experience. And with American Eagle, um, 
I kind of started my content creation world when I graduated from high school. I started with okay. YouTube. <laughs> Don't go to my YouTube channel. Okay. <laughs> Don't do it. Hey, I have some I have some vlogs out there somewhere with me and my cousin on YouTube. <laughs> Don't go to my YouTube channel. But I started doing YouTube when I graduated. I, I started doing YouTube while I was in high school, my senior year. I need to go back and private all the videos <laughs> because I look at them now and I'm just like, what was I doing? Like, I love that I dipped That's my toe funny. in the water, but I'm like, what was I doing here? So I started yeah. doing YouTube for a little bit. I remember I did Vlogmas. Those are so funny. But I started then and then I kind of like was sharing my life here and there. I remember at the time I only had like 600 followers, um, but I kind of started sharing my life then and then I was working retail at the time. I, my first retail job was Bath & Body Works. So I started working there. Okay. And then it really took off, like I said, during COVID. I, after Bath & Body Works, I started working at American Eagle. Um, and I started as a regular like brand ambassador. Then I got promoted to like a manager. And then COVID hit. And then the world like shut down. So <laughs> that's when I really took it seriously because American Ego was kind of thinking of like, okay, how can we make money with all of our stores being closed? So what oh, we did okay. is launch an internal influencer program. So we took some of our best associates, best selling associates who had a strong presses on so strong presence on social and I think I saw a video for yes. that or like, I think, yeah, yes. yeah that's so yeah. dope. We started okay. with 90 in the U.S., Puerto Rico and Canada, and now we've expanded to over 300, but we started there wow. and we started with like training. We started working more with our corporate partners and that's when I started taking it more seriously because one of the requirements was to post like two posts a week and then like two to five frames oh, okay. on the story and we would get product to post for it so that's when okay. I started kind of taking it more seriously because I was like this is something that I want to do like again I started it because there was things missing in our world and our yeah. and social yeah but that's when I was like I can really make a career out of it and then COVID happened TikTok like everything just like the rest is the just rest is history yeah. right no on the, the lap the, yeah. it, everything mm -hmm. else just fell together and I was like I can really make a career out of this I can you know, I can do, I can do things with this. I can partner with brands. I can work with my friends, which is so fun to do. Um, so I really started taking it serious then. And at the time I, I was living in San Marcos, I used to live, I relocated back okay, to San Antonio, yeah. but I was living in San Marcos and it was just interesting to see how, you know, I started working for a brand that was just helping me pay my college tuition and my bills and stuff but it turned into something more seriously and my row is super new there's only about 15 of us in the company um but wow. i also get to work with those influencers i'm no longer an internal influencer but i get to now develop those influencers yeah. for the company so, cool. so i think that's what kind of inspired me to become that content creator and it's really fun. That really helps me develop to myself, develop my page, develop my aesthetic, develop my content. And then I think from there, I just started posting more consistent, sharing my life a little bit more and just sharing my love for products that I loved, like Summer Fridays. You made me do <laughs> download. <laughs> yes, like Summer Fridays, literally like everything just happens like Gracias a Dios, like everything started working out in the favor. Yeah. And yeah, I think it, it's just been an amazing ride to just getting to work with some dream brands. And I think from there, again, from just being that internal influencer to now being kind of like a content creator in this taking up space in this creator world, like it's just been fun to see myself develop. Like I want more, I want to do more things and I want to work with more yeah. brands. But I think yeah. that's what kind of helped me dip my toe in the water and I think where you asked the DIY, it came from also, I used to do a lot of DIYs in high school. Um, and okay. I also love to like DIY room decor. Like, I like to do a lot of things. DIY stands for do it yourself. Everybody always asks like, what, what's dye? Or what's DIY? <laughs> Everybody <laughs> says it like dye. I'm like, no, it's DIY. No, <laughs> DIY. Like, nobody understood what that meant. <gasps> and I think ever since then, it's just stuck. Like everybody calls me Armando DIY or DIY or the DIY guy. Like, and I think this year also an intention is to bring that back. And I think over the past few years, I kind of lost that DIY because I was feeling a little bit uninspired. Cause my intention is to bring back 
that DIY in me. And as you see, I, I'm going to give you a sneak peek, but I'm DIYing <laughs> a dresser. Oh, yeah, I saw that you were doing that. I, oh, my God, I that's am, so cool. I'm going to DIY some furniture and, re and thrift flip some things. So I'm really just trying to get creative and inspired again and really, really reconnect with who Armando DIY is, who, cre yeah. who started creating DIYs. Yeah. And now, you know, gets to post for fun. But do brands reach out to you or do, are you, or like, do you pitch now? Like so I think it's, it's a little bit of both. I think in the beginning, like I said, I don't, we don't gatekeep here, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think in the beginning I was so lost. Like I was like, I don't know how to like, I want to work with this brand, but I don't know how to do it. So I think again, TikTok has been my bestie. Like how do okay. you pitch with brands? But I think it started with just DMing them. And I think my best advice is just to DM the brand, like, Hey, I'm Armando. I am an XYZ creator. I love your products. And can I get like a good email or I would love to get added to the PR list. Like it starts with DMing them or creating a okay. relationship. And I think what I've also seen is if you love the product, like purchase it and create content with it and okay. pretend it's being paid. Right. So like, let's say for summer Fridays, I would order some summer Fridays products. I will look at their content on social and I would be like, okay, I need to create content that already aligns with their content expectations okay. on their grid. So I'm going to create a video or create a photo that mimics if I would get posted on okay. there yeah. with their products. So I think it's a little bit of both. You DM them, you buy their products and you create with their products and then you tag them and they start seeing that and you start building that relationship because it's not forced, it's authentic. So once yeah. you start building that relationship, then they'll see you and they're like, oh my gosh, uh, we love your, we love your content. We would love to send you some things and you start creating that relationship. And then, you know, they're eventually you'll become an ambassador for them or they'll want, they'll offer you more. Um, so it can go a little bit either of two ways. And if you want to pitch yourself, I think you would have to DM them again and ask them for a good email that you can email the company, the influencer team oh, yeah. um, for them to, for you to pitch. So I think that's, what's really important is to get that email. I know in some websites, like for some brands, if you go to contact, they actually have a little, oh, if you go yes. to contact, they actually yeah. have a section that says influencer PR campaign and they'll have the email there. I've seen it for some brands, but for some of them, if you don't see it, I would recommend to like DM them if you want to work with them. Do you ever get like overwhelmed or like, cause you post not every day, but you definitely try to post, I would say like five times out the week for yes. sure. Um, yeah. But like, do you ever get like, how do you, cause it looks so organic, you know? So how do you just plan it or like, you know, just what goes on balancing nine to five and helping with markets on the weekends. Yes. Like, you know, yes. is it over overwhelming? It is. It's always overwhelming <laughs> because I'm a Virgo. I love to always be organized. <laughs> and I think all the time I'm like, okay, I need to, I, like you said, I need to be active. And I think consistency is also key. So I think being consistent with what you're posting, whether it be on TikTok on Instagram, creating reels or photos and being active on stories. I think it's important to stay consistent because I also work in nine to five. I always have to make sure I have my content like ready to go. So usually yeah. what I'm doing now for this year, again, setting my intention is after I finish my nine to five, I clock into my five to nine. So I clock in, okay. I clock in in the afternoons. I'm working right now <laughs> okay. and I have that time okay. to really bake out my content write the captions, edit whatever I need to edit and really find that time. Cause if you really want it, you're going to have to put in the work. Like yeah, there's not going to be anybody yes. that's like, Oh, I can do this for you. Or like, there's, it's just you, right. At the end of the day, we just have ourselves and, yep. and God, yep. but I think it's important. That <laughs> <laughs> and you, he helps me. <laughs> he helps me through it. But no, I think if you really want it, you have to set your goals and intentions, right. And go after your goals. Cause if I didn't have that time to really sit down, edit, plan, do my captions if I didn't have that time then I would find myself like rushing to just post something just to pose how do you stay disciplined and like because you know especially you during the week and stuff like how do you tell people no or like hey I'm I have to content create or like this is my job yeah. like respect it's, or you know like how do you do it's that? hard because I think a, a lot of times like let's say my friend wants to go to a coffee shop to do something or let's say I get invited to a dinner or like an event or something like that sometimes if I have 
I look at my planner. I like to stay organized. I write everything down in my planner. And if I have something to do that day, like, okay, this is the day that I set out to just content create, or this is the day that I set out for myself to just like edit or do whatever I needed to do. I find time to integrate the content within the day or the event. Okay. So if I'm going to, let's say a coffee shop, I'm like, oh my God, this will be a perfect time for me to take this product or to wear this outfit to get a picture in it so I can post okay. about it. So I think my best practice is always integrating whatever you need to create to your day. So like for some days that I work in nine to five and I go work in Austin or go work in Waco, like after I clock out, I'm like, okay, I'm going to have time to, I'm going to be driving after I clock out. So I can probably stop at this place to get this picture or get this. Okay. So I always mm-hmm. find time to integrate my content within my schedule, if that makes sense. Do people always get like, oh, you have your phone out or like, oh my God, you're still, you know, yes, like, all the time. I get nervous. <laughs> oh, like I, I'm barely telling my husband now that I'm like, Hey, I'm just going to whip the camera out and you just got to No, you know, I think, like, it is what it I is. think from my like circle group, I think they know already. Like I'm just like walking okay. up, just like, okay, got it. Like I need it. Okay. Like I just, in the moment you have to just do it. Right. You can't just be nervous okay. at the beginning. I was super nervous. So like. Um, guys, I need to get a video super like, no, now I just like, okay, got it. And then like, I just get it. And I think another thing that's super scary is going out and shooting content by yourself. Cause it's just you, the tripod. And then everybody's looking at you. I can't have all the scenarios you can think of. I've been through them all. I've been through people staring, people honking, people looking at you, people coming out of the building (laughs) and asking if you need help. Like I've been through it all. But you just need to, I'm, I always tell them, I'm like, oh, I'm working on a school project. Like, I have to get a picture of this. <laughs> like, oh, that's, that's smart. a good one. I, I always smart. tell my friends, like, if you're ever out there shooting content, just tell them you're working on a project. <laughs> that's so, so yeah. smart. Yeah, I get nervous. I was telling my husband that. I'm like, I feel like I need to go to, like, a a one-on-one class. I'm like, how to go outside. And, like, I can teach you. I can <laughs> teach you. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm just not with yeah. it. You and know? my family always sends me memes where it's like, or have you seen the one where, uh, did you watch the Jeffrey Dahmer show? The season where yeah. he's like, relax. <laughs> I just want to take some pictures. <laughs> I use that all the time. Like whenever we go out to eat or do something, I'm just like, relax. Yeah. I just want to <laughs> take some pictures. <laughs> like my family oh my knows, God. like if we were out somewhere, like, oh, Armando has to get his content. I'm like, oh, wait, nobody can eat because I have to take a picture. Like, You're like just, just really wait like 10 wait. seconds. And I'm just like, boom, boom, boom. But okay. In reality, you know, when I look even like on TikTok and Instagram, like so half the time the videos are like three seconds and it is just a clip of the yeah. food. Like why do we overthink yeah. it's just trying to get this picture yeah. perfect? <laughs> and sometimes like you just need to get like you just it's literally just a hack and I think it's literally just a snippet, right? Just get a snippet. When you put the video together, yeah. it's gonna look great. And even if you don't have time to get a clip, one of my best practice, one of my tips is if your phone is on live mode. If your photo is live, when you're editing the photo, you can actually turn that live photo into a video. Into. So that's one of my hacks. You get the, um, the, on your content, it's all like one filter, which I love, but that's how, yeah. <laughs> is it in your, in, is it in your, in, what'd you say? In shot in, in, in the shot? app. So I think it's in, in, from my Instagram feed, I think you, my, another best practice is find the filter or something that works in one photo and just replicate it with the rest of your photos. Because okay. then when you look at your feed, it'll look consistent. It does. In it looks some, so cool. Yeah, in some photos, I don't really add a filter or it's called a preset. I don't really add a preset. I just like... Oh, there you go. The Presets. preset. I was like, wait, what's yeah. the word? Yeah, it's preset. Back in the day. Yes. Back in the day. <laughs> back in the day it was the filter. Oh People would buy, yes. make, build, and sell yes. presets. I remember that. I remember that, that too. Oh, but no, I think just find something that works for your for your content, for your photos, for your videos, for whatever you're editing and make sure you're consistent and do it on all of the content. So your, your content can look unison and they can all look come yeah. together. So okay. I use um, Tezza, which is another app. And I, okay. I utilize that, those presets. Sometimes I use Coco. Sometimes I use like a darker feature, but really all I do is when I take my pictures, I just lower the exposure to kind of give it like an aesthetic moody oh, vibe. Okay. So I just lower I the like exposure. That. Sometimes I'll go to Tezza to add a grain or 
sharpen it so it can look like if it can pop but yes. I don't really edit anymore I used to highly edit my content but now I'm just like perfect it looks good just post it yeah. and the caption yeah and you're it's done. organic yeah I and like I think that. what that's something like that I've that. been working on too is just being more organic because I think people love to see what's happening in real time I used to yeah when I was kind of di- like kind of content creating I used to always go out and shoot all of my content like everything that I would post like I would just take it for the photo to post it but I think now I've kind of curated my feed to where it's like this is what I actually wear this is what I actually do this is what I'm actually doing I'm not wearing an all leather outfit I'm actually cleaning my casita (laughs) because it's a mess (laughs) like I I I kind of take my content more like in the moment authentic edited posted and just sharing what I do every day rather than it being like forced and not organic. Since changing it to being like more organic and stuff, how have you seen your analytics like skyrocket? I've seen a significant impact. I think when I was trying to force the content, I really wasn't I really wasn't getting an ROI, which is like a return on investment. Yeah. I really wasn't getting a lot of like likes or comments. But then when I started being more authentic, I think I want to say like last year at the beginning of 2021 and also 2022, I was being more like, okay, I'm just going to post this because it's in the moment. I started seeing more engagement. I started seeing more comments like, oh my gosh, we love this. We love to see you cleaning or whatever. Everybody loves my cleaning videos because they know yeah. I'm a mess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just, I'm like, those are my favorite. I'm like, yeah, oh I God. think I'm, be- I'm getting known for DIYs, cleaning and always dressing in some outfit but I think always I've seen a a significant amount of engagement from just showing what I am doing with like my actual daily life I'm not actually you know like I said wearing an all-leather outfit I am actually cleaning in my pajamas (laughs) listening to corridos or listening to my little senorita music like I'm this is what I'm actually doing on a Sunday I love that (laughs) I don't know if you saw on social but I created a vision board and I, yeah, yes. and I'm really sticking to it this year. I have it next to my nightstand. Okay. On your vision board, what did you put for your goals? Yeah, I think that's a loaded question. <laughs> I think I want to do. So- <laughs> we are bring the vision board we're gonna, out. We're going to bring the vision. I actually, what I did is I actually converted my physical vision board into my lock screen. So I can reference okay. it. I can reference my vision board. If I don't have it with me, I can always look at it because it's in my lock screen. How, has anything come true yet? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. I, can't believe, okay. I can't believe it's barely February and like so many things have already come true like on it. And I always think that if you want something, you have to see it physically because I think from like my friendship circle and like my friends if I'm like what are your goals for this year I'm like oh they're all in my head and I'm like well how are you gonna remember what your goals are in like three Mm -hmm. months you know so I I helped them like I helped my stepmom make her vision board I helped my like I just wanted to make sure they were set for their vision boards yeah um so yes a lot of a lot of the things on there have come true like I really wanted to work more with hotels um and I and got the, the hotel <laughs> partnership. I wanted to work more with brands. And luckily, I've been able to sign contracts with other brands to create like love UGC that. content. With, but yeah, a lot of the things on there have been, you know, coming true. And it's just slowly but surely, I, wanna, I want everything on there to come true. But I, love that. I think what's next for me, I really want to kind of not launch my own brand, but I kind of want to start you know, having my own, something that can be my own, right? I think I do a lot of things for a lot of different brands. Like I create content for them. I do X, Y, and Z, but I want something that's mine that I can like call my own, right? And I think also is venturing out of my nine to five. I've been, it's been a hard year last year and it's becoming a hard year this year within my nine to five. It can be sometimes overwhelming and it's just so long, yeah. right? I think yeah. anybody that works a nine to five or that works an office job, sometimes it can be mentally, physically, and emotionally yes. draining. And I 100% understand what that is because it's just a lot, especially when you work with so many different people. You direct, you're, oh, yes. you're directing your your attention mm-hmm. to all these different individuals. I think it's a lot and it's overwhelming. And I think I, I think us creative individuals or us who has a small business, I think we're meant for more. I think we're meant to do so much more with our time than just being at an office from nine to five. I think I am 
I think I'm made for so much more than just a nine to five. Okay. So I think I really want to find like what like what what's next because I think I was talking to yeah. my friend yesterday and she was like you're meant for so much more like I know something else is coming and I've been seeing all the signs I've been seeing 111 I've been seeing 1111 <laughs> I've been seeing 222 two, two. so I am staying but, hopeful yeah. that something is coming but mm-hmm. I really want to create something for myself that's my own my idea is just like offering services so like offering like helping small businesses or helping brands or helping somebody like curate like helping them helping them curate their social and helping them how to show up on social how to gain extra revenue on social how to like do anything social related because i love what a good plus for you is you already have now the training and experience because like, of your nine to five. Yeah, yeah, and I think with also what my friends like to do too is they come to my apartment to shoot their content. So I, <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, this is the perfect angle. And like, I love to do that. And I think that's what I'm super passionate about is like creating content, editing content, and really taking that workload off of the the um, client taking that workload off of the client so they can either so they can just have the post ready to go I can edit everything for them I can do everything like literally x y and z whatever you need to do like I can do it for you I like that and even like offering my space what I also wanted to is kind of finish furnishing my apartment to kind of also offer it to for other people to use because I've I seen like a lot that. on TikTok where a lot of people rent their spaces and people come yes. shoot photos like photographers for the day for, the for, day, two, for two hours, hours. Yeah. yeah so I've been also wanting I to like do that. that too so behind the scenes that's coming soon I've been kind of <laughs> I've been kind of I love yeah that. so like for any small business like maybe like even for your rugs like you can come yes. here take yes. all the photos make an, that you need. Make an aesthetically <laughs> pleasing like you know some, yes. a nice statement piece for the park yes. Yes. yeah yeah so I think that's yeah, definitely that's something dope. that I want to do but also find another like stable income because that's what I'm scared of I'm scared of leaving something when it was helping me like it's stabilizing me and then that feeling of like not knowing what's next scares me but I think I just have to trust my gut and you know do what's best for me for my growth for my development and really just give it my all because I think like I said I think we're all made for more and if you're working in an office yeah. job or you're doing something you're working for somebody else's dream and I think it's it's okay to be selfish sometimes and put yourself first because you are worth it you are meant for so much more and you have a bright future ahead of you but you just have to be willing to put in the work put in the time put in the energy because we are our own cheerleaders at the end of the day Yes. Yeah. Yes. I always felt like at the end of the day, you just, you just have, have yourself, yourself. You know, and if you aren't loving yourself, taking the time to even get to know yourself, yeah. know your triggers. Like when I have my this book right here, one of my favorite books is um The Four Agreements. Uh, I don't know if you've read this before. No, I but need to. I'm gonna write it down. <laughs> a short read, a super short read, less than 150 pages. Um, and he talks about like the four agreements of life and um Basically, if you live by these four freaking words, which the first agreement is like, be impeccable with your word, which, oh, wait, which I, I think love. I've heard about that book. Yeah, you know, or like, don't make assumptions, um, don't take anything personally, and like, always do your best. So those are so simple things. Yeah. Don't assume. Yes. Perfect. Yes. You know, and ever since I've been, and it's not, it's not a light switch, you know, and some people it's like, like a realization. Yeah. And like, it's, um, I don't know if you saw this funny, I'm gonna have to send it to you after this. There's a video of, um, there's a guy, he's like, I said I was healing, <laughs> not healed. healing. <laughs> That's <laughs> me. So I'm, still... I'm consistently healing. <laughs> I yeah, think I'm we've, like, I'm in the yeah, we've <laughs> all dealt with a lot of trauma that we are still, I'm still dealing, I'm still dealing and healing from my childhood dra- trauma, yeah. but I think we heal each day. <laughs> and also, I think another good one, I think you need to add it to your list, but there's this book called 101 essays that would change the way you think i oh it's okay really good i read it a page um the other day because i was like i've been trying to also be really good about my screen time like i think like yeah i sometimes i catch myself just like scrolling and scrolling or like looking at everything else when yep. i like that's wasted time that i could have either 
done something more productive or taken that clothes that's been in the dryer for the past three yeah. days out and folded. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I yes. think I catch yep. myself doing that a lot. And I think recently my intention is to be more intentional with my time. And I think I've also seen something that like before you go to bed, like if you've been scrolling on your phone, it's harder because your your yeah. eyes and your head is has that like that screen and yeah. it's harder for mm -hmm. you to go to sleep. So I've been trying to I've been working on it. I'm working on it. Not, I haven't mastered <laughs> it, but I've been working on one hour before I go to bed, no screen time. So okay. the other day, like going that. back to my story, <laughs> the other day I <laughs> I have that book. I've ordered it for a, a couple months ago and I finally got it out. I have it on my nightstand and I read it. And then I, it was like, a, if you don't know what you're doing with your life, read this. And they're, they're all, again, it's 101 essays. So it, they're all short. They're not like long. Yeah. And I read it and I was like, oh my gosh, like this is what I needed to hear. And I think that also there's so many different topics on there for literally everything that you can think of. I like that. that. You, it's from Amazon. Um, it's really, it's a good read. I'm going to read another page tonight. And what I've been doing is I've been highlighting the parts that I've been reading. So I don't catch myself like reading it again. Yes, I do that yeah. too. I highlight, <laughs> I'm like, I highlight yes. it. <laughs> no, I love to highlight. I literally look, I have this, this is my work pouch. So it's filled with a lot of highlighters because yes. I love to <laughs> highlight like important things that I need to remember. But that book was so good. And I recommend it if you're struggling or if you don't know what to do with life or you find yourself not that. knowing what the next step is, that book is really good because I think we can read quotes and repost quotes all day long, but I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> right, I'm like, oh, this quote is going to heal yes. me. This quote is going to make me feel better. <laughs> this said, like, I can't, I can do it. <laughs> I can't. This said that I can do this oh. and the, the, the quote. <laughs> You're like the, the quote, quote said, said I was I say, <laughs> I'm a lucky girl. I'm a lucky girl. <laughs> the quote said I have lucky girl syndrome. And if I <laughs> I'm lucky. Oh. No, but oh. the book is really good. It'll give you reassurance. It'll give you what you need to kind of figure out what you're what you exactly. want your next step to be. I love that. You know what I've been doing this year is um I honestly started going to the library. Oh. Ooh. I I just once a week um or like maybe twice a week. like once every two weeks we try to go because like the library books are due every two yeah. weeks and i'll spend like an hour or two yeah. there like the kids will go in the kids section and i just i don't even know what i'm looking for i'll just literally go down every section and just like whatever kind of like title costs to yeah. me i'll grab like five different books and like they could be random like this past week i did um like a youtube like how to learn making and editing videos on YouTube. And then I also got like one about motherhood. <laughs> I and love about, that. Like, like, yeah. Random. And like, I'll just force myself to yeah. read like in the morning before grabbing my phone, I'll just like read really quick or like before the kids get home from school or like while they're doing homework. You're doing your homework. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what I like to do too is go to coffee shops and take my book or whatever work I need to do. I like to go there because when you go to coffee shops, like everybody's working, so you like feel you I feel motivated that. Yeah, to you do, do work. Feel... Like I'm just like, yeah. I think I need to be doing something instead of scrolling on TikTok. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think that also motivates me because sometimes when I am like clocking into my five ten, I'm just like, let me just scroll on TikTok for ten minutes, and yeah. I'm like, oh my god, yeah. it's ten p.m. It turns into an hour. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh yeah, my god. Like, I haven't even ate dinner. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like what was I doing? I watched people I make watched dinner people on make here. Dinner on there, but I did not make dinner. <laughs> it's been it's been fun. I'm a very independent person and I love having my alone time. I love yeah. having like my little like I love everything having its place because I think when I lived with mm -hmm. roommates like it was a lot. It was messy. It was not the vibes. Like yes. I w oh it was God. it was yeah. it was not it. I was not meant to live with others. Not the vibes. It was not it. And when I finally got my own place, I was like, Oh my God, I can finally have somewhere to put my forks. I can finally have somewhere to put my actual furniture in the living room because we also shared the common area. We shared the kitchen. We shared the laundry room. So it was just not it for me. Yeah, that's just, you're like, y'all are I'm just gross. like, y'all are disgusting. <laughs> I am not going to be your mom and cleaning every single day. What was funny was our roommate, she would get up at like four or five in the morning and make smoothies. Oh, so you would hear the licuadora. Wow. And then she would leave. And everything. The licuadora in the sink and not wash it. For a week. Okay. So I would wash it. Fine. Whatever. 
And let's say I lift like a dish, she would not wash the uh, dish. Like, There's been so many times where there was <gasps> dishes on the counter or on the sink, and they would be there for weeks. And I'd be like, yeah, I already yeah. did my dishes. Like, y'all need to do your part because <laughs> it, no, it was not it. So I lived, in, I moved here back to San Antonio in July of last year. Um, and it's been the best getting to furnish my own home and having my parents over. It's been super special. That's cool. And I, yeah. my dad literally lives like 30 seconds away from me. My mom oh, lives about awesome. like 10, 15 minutes away, depending on traffic. But it's, that's it's awesome. been fun getting to be back home. I realized living on your own because we are originally from Chicago, Illinois, if you didn't know that. <gasps> Ooh. Um, yeah, so we're from Chicago and then... I never even stepped foot in Texas until I moved to Texas in 2016. We moved to New Braunfels. Oh, okay. And um, there we lived for like a couple years. And then we left Texas, moved to Florida. We moved to Miami in 2019. And then we came back Texas. to Texas in San Antonio in 2021. Oh, oh my. <laughs> so you were like traveling all over the place. Like we we're just all over the place and you know, Texas has definitely become home for us. Um so I think it's super cool to have like a place to have your parents come yeah. and land and like just, Is like, that why you decided to come live. back to Texas because of your parents? Um no, you know what's funny is all of our family, my entire family lives in Chicago and then my dad lives in Florida in Miami. So mm. nobody lives here. <laughs> well, I always love ending my episodes with an affirmation. And um, so I'm going to leave you with one affirmation yes. that you can Please tell use. me. I need all the um, affirmations but... <laughs> that I can get. <laughs> the one affirmation that I love, and I think it'll be fitting for you, is um, I create magic with everything that I do. I love so, that. I'm literally writing I it like down. To that. <laughs> <laughs> I create magic with everything that I do. Love that your vision boards are coming true. I'm I'm loving, you know, the next steps for you and your brand and you're curating your content and you know, if if it's only February and things have come true, I can't even imagine the next 10 months yeah. of what's going to happen. And tomorrow when I go to work, I'm going to be driving. I create magic with everything that I do. This is it. It's magic. <laughs> Boom. <laughs>